What's up, Geminites? It's your boy, Gem Mint. I finally read The Invincible Run by Robert Kirkman, so stay tuned and we're going to do a little review. All right, man, so I've had these three library editions forever, probably uh, for like four or five years now. I've never read Invincible. I've heard people say things like, oh, that's my favorite comic run of all time. And I'm always like, how can that be? I haven't really heard much about Invincible. So recently I picked up the remaining oversized hardcovers so that it can finish the run because they did not continue the library editions. And damn, I could easily say so far for 2019, this has been my favorite read by far. I can see why people call it their favorite comic run. It's, it's getting up there with mine. I, I'm trying to think if it is or not. It, it might be one of my favorite comics of all time. I loved Invincible. I think that uh, it was just such an epic story. It's kind of like Peter Parker, but with Superman powers that becomes as epic of a scale as like a Dragon Ball Z. Like, that's what it reminded me of. Uh, I'm not going to talk spoilers on here because this is Kirkman, you know? And Kirkman, if you know from The Walking Dead, he'll kill people and he won't bring them back, you know? And, uh, I guess that's where he kind of uh, started with, with Invincible. Invincible is his first series, right? And uh, I still feel like it doesn't get a lot of praise, but they're, they're making now an animated series, a uh, television show, and there's a movie supposed to be happening, which I think will be dope. I think an animated series is definitely the way to go with this because it gets so big, cosmic, other planets, aliens, and that's like the Dragon Ball Z vibe that it gives me. So, just to give you a quick idea of what Invincible is about, you have this uh, this kid, Mark Grayson. He's in high school. He works at the burger shop. He reads comic books. And he seems like a normal kid. But then you find out that his father is this guy, Omni-Man, which I didn't even think of until I started recording. It's like, Omnibus Man? Like, I'm Omni-Man, man. But anyway, uh, he's like Superman, right? And uh, they start talking... You know, there it's Mark and his mother, and they're watching the news. Oh, your father's out there fighting again. It looks like he'll be late for dinner, and, you know, you'll get your power soon kind of thing. So we're like, okay, Mark's going to get powers. And he goes to throw up the trash at uh, his job at some kind of burger joint, and he goes to throw the trash, and poof, it goes flying into, like, outer space. So he gets his powers, and I think for, like, the first 50 or so issues, it's very much a teenager dealing with his powers and being a superhero and he has a secret identity and it's a very uh superhero filled world that this book takes place in but then after that it starts being uh, i don't know i don't even know how to explain it it goes from like a spider-man story to like a dragon ball story people are getting their heads chopped off blood is very gruesome the the fight battles are epic and the character development on this is crazy. You see where you see Mark start from and where he ends and characters like Robot, characters like Adam Eve, Cecil. I mean, these characters completely change over the arc of this story, some physically and um, some in scale. I mean, what they accomplish is crazy. I think that uh, the Ryan Otley art is clean as hell. I love the artwork throughout this run. I love the shots that Kirkman takes at Marvel and DC because Mark Grayson's a comic fan. So there's about three or four different comic book shop like scenarios where he goes to pick up his pull list and uh, the, the shop owners talking about how companies make variants and reboot just to renumber and resume the number. Like it, it's kind of cool. I was posting screenshots in our Facebook group of that stuff. It, it, it becomes a cosmic story. You you leave Earth, you're in space. It's another comic book trope that you could just hold your breath in space and your eyes won't get sucked out or anything. But Mark is, um, his father is a, a Vertrumite, right? They're from the planet Vertrum. I, I think I'm saying that right. And they're basically like, you know, Superman, like their skin and, and why he took the name Invincible, right? A lot of twists and turns in this uh, story. It was a little slow for me around the first two library editions, which cover the first six oversized hardcovers. Still a good story, but it was a little bit of a cliche type of thing. And I think Kirkman does that on purpose because once you get to this third volume and you, and you get to these oversized hardcovers. No, I'm sorry. This is um, the first four. This is five and six, and then you have seven through 12. Once you get to the um, 
the fifth and sixth volume, you can't put it down. There were so many times I was reading this, and I was like, all right, last issue. And I get to the end, and I'm like, oh, hold up, I got to read the next issue. Like, pretty much the whole second half of this run, that was me. I would literally knock out one whole deluxe edition in one sitting. It was very uh, fast-paced, the, the dialogue, the reading, the action. Um, it was 144 issues total. I, I think I, I read it fairly quickly. I, I kind of got stuck on the first two because then I had to read another book. But once I got to, like I said, that third library edition, psh, it was nonstop from there. Freaking love me some Adam Eve, man. I thought her character was dope. And, and the reason why I compare it to Dragon Ball Z is because you're dealing with generations of characters throughout this run. You're dealing with um, Omni-Man and Mark, and then you're dealing with kids, and they're having children, and you're dealing with a lot of time as well because there's a lot of like other dimensions multiverse stuff happening like there, there's a part in this book where two characters i don't want to say who they go into another dimension and they they come back for what looks like they were gone for a couple of months but they were gone for 700 years and they basically ruled an entire planet they went through so much shit together and they come back and they've only aged about seven years but i think they were only gone for like 12 weeks or something like that they come back like what up and they, and they don't tell anybody, but it's like, damn, they've been through almost a century of history and, like, ruling a planet. It, it was crazy. They went interstellar on me, man. Like, you come back and, like, your family is aged five years and you missed out on so much stuff. It was really, like, like heart-wrenching, man. So, I highly recommend Invincible to anybody. I think this is a, a dope-ass comic. I think the artwork is great. It, the story is crazy. Uh, there's so many things that happen and it ends well. It, it, it ties everything up. It doesn't have like a shitty ending. It, I love this run. I don't know how this is not more popular. I think it has to do with like the name and like the, the, the costume he wears. I don't know that people take it seriously, but it makes sense in the book. You know, this is a world where superheroes are everywhere. There's this superhero tailor who makes everyone's costumes and he does, Hey, it's about time for a costume change. Like shit that happens in comics. You know what I mean? So it makes sense, but um, the supporting cast, I, I love. There's a lot of ups and downs on this book. It was definitely like a roller coaster. Um, we'll, let's go ahead and flip through some of the artwork together, and um, we're going to keep it spoiler-free, but we'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the format. So here is the library edition. They only made three volumes of the library edition, and it only covers the first 70 issues. And they have said that they will not continue this format. So I kind of went about this the stupidest way possible. I got the three library editions. Then I got 7 through 12 of the Ultimate Collections, which are basically oversized hardcovers. That does complete the run from issue 71 through 144. If you want to collect this run, the best bet is to either get the 12 um, Ultimate Collections. Or there are three big compendiums which are those big soft cover books they did it for walking dead and they're like 40 bucks each you can get um the entire 144 issue run in those three compendiums so that's probably like the most bang for your buck anyway let's take a look at some of the artwork so here you have uh invincible or mark grayson behind his father um nolan grayson you got Kirkman, Walker, Otley, Crabtree. Oh, and here's the, the front of that, the same image. So this is basically like an absolute edition with a hardcover slipcase. They have a lot of clean art like this that has all white backgrounds. There's even like an all white room in like the government agency that we uh, get introduced, which is kind of like a men in black vibe on this book now that I think about it. So yeah, created by Robert Kirkman and Corey Walker. So Corey, I bet, has one hell of an imagination. And then you have Kirkman, who's a good writer. At least I think so. So this is issue one. Like I said, you can see the backgrounds kind of not a, a lot, not a lot going on. They do that a lot throughout this series. And that's them sitting at the table, like I kind of mentioned. And then the father, he, he zooms in. He's super fast, got like Superman type powers. It deals with a lot of like, it almost makes fun of superhero books. It's almost like 
there's always something going on, another villain that I don't even re- remember his name, and you know they, they they deal with a lot of the not killing the villain, and they come back and destroy, you know, kill thousands of people and things of that nature. They play with a lot of those themes, man. So this is you look at the library edition. I mean, I still kind of enjoyed the fact that it um that it gives you this oversized artwork in the library edition. But here you're starting to see some blood and there's a lot of like crazy scenes throughout this book, man. Here goes Mark all beat to hell. It gets w- way worse than that throughout this series. You know, what I loved is this girl, Monster Girl, right? So Monster Girl turns into this giant monster who uh, I guess we find out is a male. And without getting too spoilery, Monster Girl impregnates an alien female and becomes the father of this child even though she's really a girl but as she's a male in her monster form that's just the type of shit i'm talking about he goes adam eve i love eve man and the character development on her too man it's crazy like it's a almost a completely different person from the beginning to end at first i didn't like this this character alan alien because they kind of give him like a couple solo issues that read like a Bronze Age comic and it was a little wordy. But he ends up, again, the development on him is crazy. All the books have these um, sketches in the background, which, I don't know, I, I flip through them pretty quickly. Alright, let's look at this deluxe edition. So yeah, the ultimate collections, I mean, they all come with um, dust jackets and then they're just plain black hardcovers on the, on the inside. Viltrumite. So then you got this guy right here, Conquest, that old guy with the huge scar. You're going to love him. Then you got Thrag. He is uh, one of the Viltrumite top dogs. I don't want to really say anything more, but anyway, so looks like that. I guess this is the way you would go if you wanted hardcovers. You would get all the um, Ultimate Collections. So look at this. His hand is around his neck. He squeezes it and pops his head off. Like, see how crazy it gets? And how much more beat up Mark gets? Look at this guy's even looking like Vegeta. (laughs) I wonder if anyone else has ever compared this to Dragon Ball. I might be the first one to coin that. Y'all gotta let me know. And with the type of destruction they do, it, it, it reminds me very much like that. Dinosaurus. Fucking love Dinosaurus. You got Cecil, hated him, and then you end up loving him. It's funny with that Adam Eve, she's like a skinny teenager, then she becomes kind of thick AF <laughs> later on in life. It's funny. All right, guys, so that is Invincible by Robert Kirkman. Uh, hold on, what is this? It's Robert Kirkman. This is created by Robert Kirkman and Corey Walker. Now, Corey Walker does um, the pencils, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, he's a penciler and an inker. Ryan Ryan Otley's also a penciler and an inker for some issues. But I don't know. It says created by Robert Kirkman and Corey Walker. I wonder how much influence Corey has on this book because, I don't know, it doesn't really feel like a Kirkman book. Um, But I don't know. What do I know? Anyway, let me know what you think about Invincible in the comments below. Drop me a like on the way out. And make sure to subscribe to the channel for more daily content. Keep it minty fresh. Peace. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.